So uh, what we're talking about here is uh, supply and demand for water use by new uh, forest plantations. We should call it tree plantations. And uh, you'll see what that means in a while. But uh, my first slide, uh, what we have here is comparing the water use and uh, water yields of different land covers. And uh, so this is a key part of the, the sort of the heart of the, the calculations we've done, where the vertical axis is uh, water yield. It's called excess water, but that's uh, when rainwater falls on a, an area. Uh, if it's covered with trees, uh, you can expect the water yield to follow a curve something like that. Where, for example, at a thousand millimeter uh, annual rainfall, you might expect about millimeters of uh, water to eventually end up in the stream. If it's cleared land or annual crops, something over 350 millimeters would end up in the streams ultimately. It's not all fast runoff. Uh, that includes ground flow to the rivers. And that's how uh, that ground flow accounts largely for how uh, we see uh, rivers flowing even when it's not raining. And, uh, so this, this is a, these are called the Zhang curves after uh, Lu Zhang et al. in CSIRO. And this represents uh, the statistical results for, from paired catchments in about 230 countries around the world on the different rainfall levels. So that's a, that's a key. That we expect a lot more water in the river from uh, cleared land or annual crops or annual pastures than we do uh, with a, a tree plantation. And I'm just going to go. The area we're talking about is the uh, Macquarie, the Macquarie catchment in the Murray Darling Basin, and in particular the uh, Macquarie River Valley. This is Macquarie River there, where the water flows flows from. Uh, so the southeast to northwest, and it, uh, it ends up in the Murray River. Some of it ends up there, but most of it uh, is, goes out in evapotranspiration before it even gets to the river. In fact, that typifies the, the Murray Darling Basin as a whole, which uh, the rainfall that comes in there to the Murray Darling Basin is a right, about 500,000 gigaliters a year just in rainfall. The amount that uh, ends up being in the rivers uh, and in groundwater is less than 10% of that. Less than 10 so the rest of it, the 90% 90, 90 of it goes off in evaporation or uh, evapotranspiration, depending on vegetation cover. And so you have a lot of rangeland, you have a lot of dryland farming there. It's uh, uh, letting quite a bit of water go into the streams, and you've got forested areas in the high rainfall bits that uh, will be transpiring a lot more water and are delivering a lot less water to the streams. And we'll just look a little more carefully at that area. Uh, this is a high rainfall end here. This area, you see 10, uh, we call it its upper catchment, 10, that represents uh, 1,000 millimeters of rainfall a year. You see eight. 800 millimeters a year, this area. And I've broken these into sort of distinct groups to make it simpler. This is 600 millimeters a year. This is a mid catchment uh, upstream of the urban area. This is a mid catchment uh, in the Talberger area. It's a mid catchment uh, downstream of the urban area. We're taking Dubbo as an urban area. And we have irrigators as water users, stock and domestic users, we have wetlands, and uh, uh, effluent creeks and rivers evaporation. And so really these are water sources up here, river sources, and they end up in the, uh, being also used by irrigators, stock and domestic, and importantly wetlands. 
Now the question is, is going to revolve around um, uh, new tree plantations and what the effect that will be. Uh, let's see, what is next? This is the same thing, just as a schematic. I'll just stay for a minute on this one. These are different levels of rainfall, 600 to 1,000 mils. Uh, this is wood yield, mean annual increment of wood yield. Uh, so about 8 cubic meters a year with the low rainfall and about 18 cubic meters of wood per hectare from the high rainfall. Water use, we expect it to be like an extra uh, half, a, half a megaliter in the low rainfall area and about 1.3 megaliters per hectare in the high rainfall areas. And what that means is to use one gigaliter of water uh, at the low, low end it would require about 1,600 acres, 1,600 hectares, or it's only 740 hectares in the, in the high rainfall. And one of the novel things about uh, this study is we're going to be talking in uh, costs of, uh, uh, it's easy to think of water markets in terms of uh, dollars per gigaliter in sales. And uh, we're going to be talking about costs of uh, uh, Let's say forest production and the effect of forest on a dollars per gigaliter basis, so we can compare these things. Here, uh, really a simple picture of how uh, the benefits of a, of a tree plantation might look in terms of dollars per gigaliter. Uh, and this is the present value over a 30 year period uh, of. This is at $40 per cubic meter of stumpage value. And that's the value to the landowner. Uh, that's what he gets for the harvest uh, after, uh, after all the haulage cost and harvest cost. That's just the bit the farmer gets. That's where somebody else does the harvest and takes it to the mill and all that. So it's a very simple uh, view. This is $40, $50, up to $70 per uh, cubic meter, and this is what you end up with the present value of that uh, in terms of present value per megaliter of use. Now, to that benefit uh, per megaliter, per gigaliter, we have costs. The cost of establishing a plantation, uh, the direct costs of putting in the trees and so on, and the opportunity costs of displacing other land uses. The low end of the cost here is for you displacing uh, pastures, let's say annual pasture or perennial pastures. And it's, uh, what's typical in those areas is you have areas of pasture and perennial pasture. Uh, it would be the lowest cost place, opportunity cost wise, uh, to, put a, to put tree plantations. And then as you go, go over here, you're getting into the area where you're actually using high value, even cropland. This is where you're using the highest value cropland to plant trees. So the opportunity cost is really high. So what we've done is taken these benefits, marginal benefits, minus the marginal costs, and that gives you a marginal value curve uh, for that. 